Unfortunately, it affects most businesses. And it's basically just a filing requirement for you to say who owns the business, who has the beneficial ownership. That passed a few years ago, the company delayed and delayed and delayed. And then finally in 2024, they said, this is the year we're going to require yeah. all these businesses to register. And welcome to another episode of The Bandit Room. My name is Charles. I'm joined here in the studio today by Mr. Caleb. Hello again. How you been? You catching up on the bear? Getting there. Getting yeah. there. Not, not, you're not, enough you're not caught up yet? Not entirely. No. Season I need, three? I have, are you caught up? I have up? one you, day until season know, three comes out. You it just th- started. You would think that the bear would be right up my alley. You would think it's so. it's about food. It's like, and you've been to like half the yeah, restaurants that are featured it, on it, there. I, I believe it's, it's in Chicago, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's kind of based off of a couple, but I think Alinea and... But I've, I've watched the first season kind of... And that's it? Yeah. Oh. I, I need oh, to well. get back... They go to they go to Noma in Copenhagen in season two, so which you're familiar uh, with. I've yeah. been in Noma five times. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Awesome. yeah. that's like just dropping that. Like, yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Noma five times. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's the one in Chicago? Madison Park, something? No, Alinea. Alinea's Alinea. Oh, Alinea is the big one. one. Okay, okay. Like that's the most famous one okay. there. Three Michelin star. Gotcha. Well, thank you for correcting me. Well, I mean, so, this isn't a, a three Michelin star top fifty restaurant in the world podcast. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> it's not it a, need to know that. Not so. a restaurant podcast. But yeah, so our guest today, you've heard him a little bit. It's Mr. Jason Ackerman, repeat guest, friend of the show. Thank you for joining us. It's my honor. <laughs> it is your honor, <laughs> uh, Jason. You are a, a CPA, a CFP, a CGMA over at BNA CPA. That is just a lot of letters. A lot of letters. A lot of letters. Yeah. Um, most of them are made up. So. Most of them are made. Yeah, <laughs> special things you paid for. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. You are a CPA. Yeah, at, so I'm at, a CPA. So I focus mostly in tax. Yeah. Our our firm does mostly tax returns. We do bookkeeping. Um, we have a wealth side. Adam, my brother, has been on this podcast, so we do uh, investment advising and uh, a lot of other things for small businesses, including this new BOI that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of things changing here. Um, so let's 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 jump into it since we're we're let's we're do on it. it. Let's so jump. Let's jump. Uh, so there's a brand new requirement for essentially all businesses. Uh, BOIR. It's not all businesses, but yeah. So a couple of years ago. There was a Corporate Transparency Act that passed. And basically the whole reason why this passed is the the federal government doesn't know who owns all these entities. And they're trying to prevent money laundering and people from foreign companies coming in and not just moving money through the U.S. and they don't know who owns these entities. So that yeah. that's like kind of the background of how this thing came about. Unfortunately, it affects most businesses and it's basically just a filing requirement for you to say who owns the business who has the beneficial ownership that passed a few years ago the company delayed and delayed and delayed and then finally in 2024 they said this is the year we're going to require yeah. all these businesses to register makes sense makes sense so I, i'm glad you got into the why because that's kind of a you know a business owner listening or hearing about it you know it's sort of like a Oh, it's just this one more thing I have to file, one more thing I have to worry about yeah. to take care of, um, which that is that there is a requirement there, and it's you know somewhat burdensome, but it's not like a in highly invasive form to, to complete. Yeah, so and there's pretty significant penalties if you don't do it. Right. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but it's like five hundred dollars a day, up to ten thousand dollars, two years in jail. Like it, they're it's legitimate. Like it's not like slap on the wrist. <laughs> So, and it's not hard to do, but it is a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. $10,000 or imprisonment up to two years. Yeah, I, I don't look good in orange. <laughs> I wouldn't be good in prison. <laughs> I would last probably 20 minutes. <laughs> like, this, that's not for me. It's a small price to pay to yeah. file this form <laughs> to, uh, to avoid that potential. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's talk about at the core of it, you're saying it, it's just a simple way of reporting to the government who owns a business. Yeah. And the sort of the big why behind it is making sure the government is aware, you know, if you have uh, foreign entities controlling a business or an organization or things like that, like you're, yeah. you're wanting to avoid. And there's a lot of like single member LLCs, you know, you might have, you might own a rental property, they just put in an LLC or you might just set up an LLC, like anyone can go set up an LLC pretty easily and 
Yeah. The, the federal government has no idea who owns that because it's a state controlled thing. So that's the whole background on this law. I didn't create it. Your <laughs> CPA didn't create it. Your lawyer didn't create it. Don't get mad at us. We're yeah. just telling you the bad news. <laughs> They're just trying to keep you out of jail. Yeah. That's all it is. Just trying to keep you compliant. So yeah, talk about that. Are, are you as a CPA starting to, to file these kind of things for your clients? Yeah. So it, it's not an IRS mm-hmm. thing. This is with FinCEN. So this is not a tax thing, but it does, you know, it's tax adjacent. There's a lot of CPAs that are choosing not to do this or lawyers, but they just don't, a lot of CPAs or lawyers don't want the liability of doing this. Our perspective, like we kind of were wavering, like, should we offer this to clients? Should we not? But at the end of the day, it's like, I want the client to be able to do it right. right. It's a little complicated. I think some people can do it. Some people can't. So I think we had to offer it to our clients as a service mm-hmm. just because I thought that was the right thing to do. So do you kind of evaluate clients on a client-by-client basis on that, on like whether so some what, clients might no, just do what, it themselves? What we did um, at the beginning of the year, we sent out an email to all of our clients that just said, hey, this is the new law. This is how you do it. This is the website. If you want us to do it, fill out this form. Gotcha. We're going to charge you $500 to do it on your behalf Mm -hmm. and if you want us to do it sign up and you know we're in the summer now so right now we're sending out our engagement letters luckily most of them don't have to be done until the end of the year Mm -hmm. and we can kind of get over some specifics in a second of the deadlines and stuff but yeah so we're kind of the summer we're going to send all our engagement letters get all of our information we're using tax bandits um, which we'll talk about too to do kind of our back-end processing of everything yeah so we're starting to do it now um, it'll be good for our firm. We'll make a little money and also be good for the clients. Like they have the peace of mind knowing that someone read all the laws and right. knows what we're doing and right. we'll hopefully <laughs> file it properly for them. Right. right. Yeah. That's something we're, we're excited to, to work with you to, to put together for tax bandits. Let's talk about, so you have to do this BOI reporting and the general is if you have an entity, so that's anything registered with the secretary of state. So that's an LLC an ink, an LLP, something like that. Um, You have to register. There's some exemptions. Normally the exemptions are you have to have over $5 million in sales and 20 employees. So most small businesses don't have that. Right. Um, So most of them are going to have to do this. There's some other exemptions that are smaller, not for profit. If you've had no activity in the LLC for a couple years, uh, there's like 25 or so exemptions. Most of them, though, are like if you're registered with the SEC, if you're publicly traded, blah, blah, blah. Most of the people listening to this are not that. So most likely you're going to have to do this. Um, if you if that LLC or Inc. or whatever was registered before January 1st, you have until the end of the year to file your BOI report. So you have until 12 31 24. Gotcha. Um, if it was done after, so after 1 1 24, you have 90 days. So if you do it, on the first day, January 1st, you have 90 days after that, whatever that day is, to file your BOI. What gets tricky, though, is once you file it, you have to do a correction within 30 days. So if, if you register... If anything changes. If anything changes, so your name changes, the beneficial owners change, and address changes. So if you move, you have to do a corrected. Address you, is probably you, the biggest one. Yeah. I mean, so, like, yeah, because... Ownership yeah. doesn't often change, but I mean, it could. Very yeah, much, most likely it's going to be, like you yeah. said, an address change, and we might not know that. Like, right. we don't know if a client moves necessarily until we do the tax return, right. So, and you have a 30-day window. So we're, that's like kind of the biggest thing we're trying to f- figure out what we're having tax bandits build in is like automated emails to the clients to just be mm-hmm. like, hey, you basically have to send it every month just reminding them, hey, if you move, you got to let us know because we have to do a corrected report. Yeah. So you start a 30-day clock. So we're recommending basically all of our clients wait until the end of the year to file these because you don't want to start that 30-day clock until you absolutely have to. So what we're going to do is we're going to get them all ready to go, and then we'll file them the last week of December, a couple days before because if it gets rejected or something for some reason, like gives us a few days to figure that out. But I think that's the best move for most people because you're just if you do it now, and if you know you're not going to move and you're one person, like, yeah, you can go ahead and do it now. Mm-hmm. But if you're a little bit more complicated, that's probably the route I would go. Um, you can get it ready and uh, submit it kind of towards the end of the year. Gotcha. And I'm looking here on the penalties. It says it ranges from $591 a day for noncompliance. So, like, yeah, yeah that'll get up there pretty quick if you're not doing it. And yeah. there's your fee right there as an <laughs> accountant. So and, it's, like, and it's a little complex because... 
it's beneficial ownership. Yeah. So that might seem easy, like if you have one person and owns it, but what if you have 20 people who own it? A beneficial owner is over 25% ownership or has control. Yeah. So if you have 20 owners, that's 5%. Let's assume they're all equal 5% mm -hmm. each. Who who are the beneficial owners in that case? So you have to figure that out. Like, who, mm -hmm. do they have a board? And if that board is changing every year, you yeah. have to do a new one every year. So it can get a little complicated for these larger ones. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be a little cognizant of that. Also, if you're in a state that's a community property state, so South Carolina is not a community property state, mm -hmm. but Wisconsin, Louisiana, California. Um, and describe the common property. Uh, community property, sorry. Oh, gotcha. It's a... Uh, it's just a way they split up assets, marital assets. So gotcha. if you're in one of those states, you probably have to register your spouse also as a beneficial owner. Mm -hmm. So we're like, for our clients, we're going to get the operating agreement if we don't have it already. Make sure we read and understand who has control and make sure that we register all those. I would say like, and this is just me opinioning. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I don't think that the government's going to come after you. Like if you missed a beneficial owner, you didn't change something. Like they could. I think they're going to use it more as like that's a gateway to get other people. Mm -hmm. Like it's a gateway charge to do other things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to be compliant. You want to do it the best you can. Right. But I wouldn't worry so much about like, hey, I missed. You know, we had a secretary on there that we should have had. Mm -hmm. Like just do a corrected report when you know that. But don't mm -hmm. like you need to file it. For sure. Like non filing is not good. I yeah. think that's like, but you need to file it, file it to your best of ability. If you're confused, hire someone like me, or there's plenty of people mm -hmm. that will do it because we're more familiar with the laws. Like there's also some more smaller nuances that will be able to hopefully file it on your behalf. And what advice would you have for, uh, say, some, some kind of service provider out there who's not? gotten into this, their clients haven't started asking about this, and they want to be, you know, you want them to be proactive to say, hey, you know, inform your clients, you know, this is a new requirement, this is something we should be handling. Um, yeah, so I think we need to step, take a step back and yeah. talk about tax bandits. Sure. So, you know, I've, this is coming up, um, lat, let's, let's go back in time in our time <laughs> machine to last <laughs> October, November. Yeah. You know, we know this is coming. Not a lot of people know this is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of CPAs knew it was coming because we're getting CPE on this. Lawyers probably might have known. So Aggie here at Tatspan, or at Span, you know, you guys are looking kind of for a new product, something to do. And I was like, hey, this is something that you guys should really look into. Like, there's nobody in the market in this right now. Like, this is going to be needed. Yeah. You can file it directly on the website with FinCEN. But the problem with that is, like, if you need to do a correction or something or, like, you're a CPA like mm -hmm. us, like you don't want to do it directly through there. Cause if I have to do something else, like it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, Hey, this is a big opportunity for you guys to create a software that'll help a bunch of customers. And also like mm -hmm. CPAs like me. So Addy was like, I think this is a good idea. I think he probably asked you to like do a little research on it. Yeah. We had, <laughs> I remember having the conversation. It, you know, it was uh, yeah, it was fascinating. It's kind of like, Hey, check this thing out. It's, it's a new requirement coming up. We should we should get on that. What's great about you guys, not to toot your horn too much, <laughs> but I mean, you were able to come up with this product, put it to market within four months, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like you yeah. had the first direct connection with FinCEN, mm -hmm. so you you were the first API integration that actually worked out of all of them. I think there's only three or four competitors still now. Yeah, that have popped up, but you guys were the first, and you guys have designed the product to make it easy for the for someone out of the public. So if you're just, yeah. if you're not a CPA, but you're just, you know, you have to do this. Tat Spanis is a great way. You just go on the website. It kind of walks you through all the questions and makes yep. it easy. But from our side, it's making it easy for get to get our customer information that we need. So we might have a lot of it, but you have to upload a driver's license or a passport mm -hmm. for all the beneficial owners. Yeah. So Tat Spanis is making it. So you, we just put in their emails. It sends it to them. It verifies their driver's license, puts it yep. back into the software. And then like, we might have a client who has 10 LLCs. Mm -hmm. Like, We don't want to have to type in that driver's license 10 times. Right. We'd have to do that on the FinCEN website. So you've made it so we can just copy yeah. that. And the client only has to do it once. Yeah. You've made it easy to do a correction. You're going to have the automated emails. You've done 
basically everything we've asked to do. And on a really base level, like the FinCEN website doesn't say progress, right? So like if you start it and then stop, like it's not still in there. Is that, am, am yeah. I correct about it's that? It's a so government like, website. Yeah. So like it's literally, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you even on that you simple you level of like, yeah. if you stop and come back, you're screwed. Like, you yeah, the government website is free, but the government <laughs> website is free. <laughs> <laughs> so you and can you get what you pay for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if you know what you're doing yeah. and you know, you just have one you, and you can go on there, but so you're better off in tax bandits down the road. So, but yeah, I, and then kind of go, to go back to your question that you asked before, which is if you're a CPA, should you do this? Like mm-hmm. our firm is all about client service and like, how can we service the client better? And we've just found that most of the lawyers around here are not doing it. Most other CPAs around here are not doing it. The client has to have someone to go to and it's not that hard. You can like, we basically, I learned all about it, but I've delegated basically to a new hire. Mm-hmm to do most of the stuff and he's now caught up on everything. So like you can have a lower level staff do most of this work and it's something that just makes the client's lives easier and they, and they're willing to pay for it. Right. Like it's a service that they need and they want the peace of mind that their CPA or their lawyer is doing it. So yeah. And like also we didn't talk about, but like yeah. you've made it. So you basically white label it Yeah. for CPA. So mm-hmm. if you p- Sign up for the Bandito package. You can do the custom branding, custom colors, yep. custom emails, custom, like it looks like it's all coming from you and not from Tats Bandits. I mean, to me, it was a kind of a no brainer mm-hmm. to offer, and we're happy that we're doing it. We've had positive feedback. Now, you guys have always been uh, very technology focused as a CPA firm from the initial conversations we had with, from the beginning of time. You've been my, very- dad, my dad, who started our firm, has always been technology focused even before me like he's not one of these crotchety old people who are like i want to do everything on ledger paper right well it's kind of like vital for your whole business as an accountant to be embracing new technology and embracing the right technology to make your lives easier yeah because i mean we want to service our clients like we want to spend time advising clients right the more time we're spending doing the mundane tasks and the automated tasks like we're not able to spend that time doing the higher level stuff, which that, is what the clients want. It's the true value of your service, right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of that being that trusted advisor you go to. Um, yeah. So, like you want to know that I'm going to do it right. That's right. like the one thing like, hey, I'm going to do your tax share. I'm going to do the BOI. I'm going to do your bookkeeping, whatever. We're right. going to do it right. Like right. that's a big, that's a big hurdle that yeah. a lot of firms don't do. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just doing it right. So like we got to do it right. And yeah. technology is a big help for that. You know, yeah. if you're doing a lot of tasks that aren't automated, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the best technology that has the checks, you're going to make more mistakes. Like we make mistakes, but hopefully we're going to either our review process or the technology is going to catch some of that. And, you know, as AI gets bigger, right? Like AI is huge in everyone's uh, field, especially in accounting. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to leverage AI so we can keep providing more of these advisors. Because Stuff is getting more and more complex. Mm-hmm. Like every tax return, like the more technology is easy, like the more complicated the laws can get. Mm-hmm. Customers are in different jurisdictions. You know, it used to be that you opened up a clothing store and you were in on Main Street, Rock Hill, mm-hmm. and you only had to worry about Rock Hill sales tax. Mm-hmm. Well, now you're selling on eBay mm-hmm. or on your website, and you could be in a hundred countries. Oh, gotcha. Well, that creates a lot of complexities and compliance yeah. for your business, right. um, and that's just almost every business now, like you might be hiring someone overseas or you might, you know, there's just so much stuff that's going on. The world is a lot smaller yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but that just creates a lot more complexity. Or remote yeah. employees, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have the technology to be able to support that. And then you have to have the expertise yeah. to be able to advise on that. And that's what I want to spend most of my time on. That's what yeah. I'm trying to do. Yeah. And talk about how like the size for for a firm of your size, which like how would you designate that? You're talking about number of clients, number of returns, number of uh, yeah. Kind of so we, I mean, we're a six million dollar firm. We're middle. Like we would be top four hundred in the country. Yeah. So there's thirty five thousand, forty thousand CPA mm-hmm. firms. Yeah. So most of them are one two people. We've mm-hmm. got thirty five people. Wow. Um. So we're middle size. Um. And I think what what is good about our size firm is. We, we can adapt faster. So yeah. if there is a new technology out, if you're a, like a really big company, it takes a long time to implement a new technology. Like we can implement it pretty fast. Mm. Um, we don't have like all the expertise in all areas, but we have a, I like to think of ourselves as the quarterback. So if you're selling your business, we might need like a specialized 
type of CPA to do a certain valuation or a 1202 stock analysis or something. Like we might not be able to do that in house, but we'll find someone to help you with that. So I, I think at our size firm, we have a lot of expertise. Like we've got 35 people with a lot of experience, yeah. but we also have the connections that if you need somebody else, we can help you. And I think we're also very local to, we're still Rock Hill base. We're still big in the community. How many and, years now? Uh, we started in 77. So yeah. we're coming up on 50. Yeah. We're going to have a big uh, celebration yeah. Fantastic. when we get to 50. So we still have the small feel, but we have a little bit bigger yeah. expertise. And the kind of services that you decide is the right blend of services for you, uh, it's obviously changing over time. But uh, how do you like see that going forward? Yeah, I think it goes kind of back to the... Our, our main thing is client service. Like, mm -hmm. how can we serve the client right? Mm -hmm. And what services are we going to add to do that? And we have to be able to have the expertise to add a service line before we do it. Or else, like, let's partner with someone who's really good right. and help that. So, like, for instance, we, we, were, we were outsourcing all of our bookkeeping. Like, if, if a client came and wanted detailed bookkeeping, yeah. we were like, hey... We, we don't really want to do this. Like we're focusing on tax and mm -hmm. advising. Let's get somebody else. But then we've just found that the bookkeepers are not that good. <laughs> <laughs> so we've decided like, hey, this is just something that our clients need. So we're starting to build out a, a accounting service controller um, level service gotcha. that we're going to release. Um, we've already kind of done it, but mm -hmm. we haven't kind of released it to the public yet. Okay. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, but our bread and butter is tax and advising. Mm -hmm. um, my brother does well, so we do a lot of investment advising, financial planning. Like that's where we want to be. But there's so you could do a million things. Yeah. <laughs> it, you can't do it all, yeah. and you can't be an expert in everything. So especially at our size, like you have to pick and choose, and you have to need yeah. to. Do and that. you guys have been great at, at recommending other services. I mean, I think Sock was a recommendation from you. I think our, yeah. our Sock provider, current Sock provider. Yeah, um, like I, so yeah. I, I know enough to be dangerous, right? <laughs> and, right. and but I know what you see. need, but I don't. But sometimes we can't offer right. that service, right? Well, because the world is so huge. I mean, that that, that realm, you know. Yeah, is, like is like a SOC audit is a very specialized audit right. that you, you have to have, have expertise in that. You know, so, like, we just don't have the expertise for that. So, right. what are would you say are some major challenges uh, for a CPA firm today or, or right now? The, I mean, the biggest thing is talent. Yeah, we have getting a the right talent. We have a huge talent shortage um, for a lot of reasons. Mainly, I think that we don't have an AP class in high school. So we're most for of, accounting. For accounting. Yeah. So, you know, most of the best kids in high school, they want AP classes mm -hmm. to get into whatever school they need the higher GPA. Yeah. So accounting has always been like an elective. Mm -hmm. Um, all the business classes have really, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's probably a broader conversation of how our education system, like, yeah. do we need four years of English and four <laughs> years of math and four years of social studies when like you really need to learn yeah. finance right, and, right. <laughs> and accounting yeah. would be a very like accounting should really be required for yeah. high school kids. Yeah. Um, but I, I think our biggest thing is we right now pretty much every state requires 150 hours to be a CPA which is basically a master's degree. Master's degree now is $70,000. College credit to get So yeah. why would you want to become a CPA when you could go work at a bank for right out of college for 100000 or work for a software company? Or like if you go work at a big four firm, you're going to work pretty much as much as an investment maker but make half the much money. So like, <laughs> why would you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. so like in general, that, that's like our biggest problem, and it's just been going on for a while. So it's hard for us. I think we've been good at being able to find talent. Like we've built a program with Winthrop. Mm -hmm. uh, How do you think most of your team gets into the, this line of work? Uh, you were you kind of grew up in it, so you're not really a fair <laughs> case study. But uh, for C other CPAs you work with or you 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 um, you work closely with, yeah. What do you well, say was they've kind of the they've draw done to they've that? done studies on this. Yeah. and it's the first class. It's the first accounting class they take in college. So if that one's good or bad. And you're not sure if you're on the fence, you might, you might be like, hey, I'm good at numbers or, hey, mm -hmm. I want to go into business. It's like accounting is the best major for a business because yeah. it's, the language of, it's the language of business. Yeah. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to run your own business, like I would do a dubber major in marketing and accounting because mm -hmm. accounting, you need to know the numbers and marketing. Sides. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I mean, that's what I recommend people. Mm -hmm. Like a major in finance is like, it's good, but yeah. you're going to get the same thing in accounting. So, mm -hmm. and that first class is very important. Like if you have somebody who, you know, is teaching it and is not good yeah. or doesn't speak English very well, like you're right. turned off, that's when people drop yeah. from accounting. So, well, that it also kind of seems like the general advice to children is so often follow your dreams or follow your heart, you know, whatever you love to do. Uh, and accounting is probably not always up there <laughs> in the top, the top choices of like, you know, uh, <laughs> you know rock star, uh, famous actor, influencer. Uh, uh, and very accountant, true. Accountant probably number but four. I, you know, and I think we need a complete kind of rebrand. Like we need to make it CPA sexy. Yeah. And like, we do have some sexy, like, it's fun helping clients, like, succeed and grow. Who's the sexiest right. accountant, Jason? <laughs> Who's the sexiest <laughs> accountant? Pre um, Alan Greenspan. No, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Alan Green? <laughs> we should have a sexy accountant award. <laughs> lingerie. <laughs> yeah. Lingerie and, like, yeah. We'll work on that. That's a great idea. I'm going to okay. write that to the ASCPA. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad we can spitball some ideas here. Uh, I just want to save your profession. <laughs> But you know, I th but I think we, I think it. we it's have like done a bad job of branding. Like most people think we're boring right. and like, you know, the stuff we're doing because all the mundane stuff's being automated. So yeah, we're doing like advising stuff. Like we're helping people every day with their lives. Like that's a good if point. we can save money, if we can help them save money, if we can help them, you know, get their first house or blah blah blah. Like we're helping we're helping them succeed for the future. Yeah. And that's exciting. So I like that's what I when I go talk to classes, high school or college, like yeah. I lead with that. Like yeah. you're gonna help people, especially you know we're in public accounting. We have clients like yeah. I'm getting to help Aggie or you guys. Like you know you've sold a product, you've right. exited. Like, like it, yeah, like you guys are the perfect story of uh, you know you're like I was telling you before. This is like the American dream, right. literally like. Adi was selling, driving for Papa John's 10 years ago, <laughs> and now he has an airplane. So, like, seeing that progress, and, you know, I'm going to take a very, very, very small credit in that, less than 1%. <laughs> that was 99% Adi and you, all of you guys here. Well. Um, but, you know, just to be a small part in that is exciting for me. And, like, watching clients have success is exciting. And we asked our clients, like, what's your ultimate goal? It mm -hmm. might be to sell. Mm -hmm. a product or it might be I want to pass this down but so like everyone has a different ultimate goal of how they want to transition their business yeah. but that's important for us to know and we can design our advice around that because I would like, advise yeah. I would advise differently if you're going to sell it compared to if you want to gift it or mm -hmm. you want your employees to buy it or whatever right right yeah right. yeah good point um, now getting back to the talent point you were talking about um, you guys have engineered kind of an interesting solution for this at BNA with your internship program, right? We have. So we've, as far as I know, <laughs> we're the only people in the country that are doing this, uh -huh. which is basically we, so we have a high school intern program, which we've had a long time. Uh -huh. So high school interns, we pay them, you know, $20, $25 an hour, whatever. Yeah. They're working, they're doing mostly administrative work. We started five or six years ago, a program with Winthrop, um, and we've kind of Augmented, but basically now we bring in people and we pay them five hundred dollars for a day, mm -hmm. and they shadow us. Um, they apply to do this. They shadow us. We brought in about ten people uh, this past year, mm -hmm. and then we offer them to apply for a internship. Um, and then if you get that internship, you work for about four months, and then if you like us and we like you, then we offer you a full time position plus. We pay for your schooling. We pay up to ten thousand dollars a year for a scholarship. So we're paying you plus ten thousand dollars while you're in school. So we try to get sophomores so they're here for two years um, before they graduate. Mm -hmm. um, and our whole goal with this was A, to get talent, but also, you know, schools getting more expensive, help yeah. pay for them. We also want to encourage passing the CPA exam. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get them to do that while they're um, in school. Mm -hmm. And then that also gives us like, hey, we're getting you for two years, we're training you. So when you're ready to graduate, like you're way ahead of your peers, yeah. As far as what you know, right? Like you can you get the real world experience yeah. to back up your yeah. Class you can knowledge. like you can yeah. you can come in and you can contribute. You can contribute right away as an intern, and we yeah. tell everyone that like day one, like there's a lot of stuff you can add. Like you're better at technology than I am. You can see <laughs> stuff that we're not doing. You can tell us. 
Um, but when you graduate and you've had two years of experience, like you're really ready to, you can work with clients right away. Yeah. Whereas if you go work at a big four firm, like you're not allowed to talk to a client for four years mm-hmm. and you're doing like mundane, mundane tasks. Like yeah. you're doing like real stuff with us. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fascinating. That's great. That's a, uh, and so you said you're, you're, you'll hire them and you'll sort of, they would get some kind of a salary and you're also paying for school at the same time Yeah, during that. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. So they're making good money that we're helping supplement, you know, I don't, depends if you're in say out say obviously but mm-hmm. you're getting ten thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. um and you're getting the work experience all yeah. at one time right so it's a it's mm-hmm. a it's a win-win for everybody yeah you know it obviously helps us it helps them yeah and it just helps with our pipeline that's why we don't really have a pipeline problem because we basically create our own pipeline and we can compete like we start yeah. people at roughly 75 that's what people going to the big four are starting in charlotte yeah, yeah. Wow. so we're starting yeah. the same fantastic as they are and you're Getting to work for you, not not a big four. Yeah, it's that, and you uh-huh. and you get to work for and me. You get now to work that might for be you. a negative. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a plus. I think it's a plus. What would you say are some of the most common mistakes you see businesses make with their accounting? Now, I'm sure this could be a wide. Oh boy, <laughs> how long you got? Um, first, your books have to be good. Like it's hard for me to give advice if right. your books are just all over the place. Right. So, like, if I don't, if you don't know the numbers, I don't know the numbers. I can't. So, mm-hmm. like. The best thing you can do is you can get your books right. Yeah. And you have to pay a little bit for that. Mm-hmm. But like if you hire someone like us, like a small business probably can't afford a controller mm-hmm. to come in full time. You know, that's hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year. But right. you can pay us mm-hmm. thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. and your books will be good and then we can make decisions off that. So I would say like the biggest thing is like as a Owner, you shouldn't be doing your own bookkeeping, most likely. Like that should like you have to stay you have to understand them and like know what's going on. If you don't that's you definitely can't completely step out because that's when people steal money from you and you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> but like the day to day stuff and like making sure the books are accurate, that needs to be done to a professional. Yeah. And if that's done correctly, and you know, a lot of bookkeepers don't know how to do it correctly. But if you do your books <laughs> correctly, you know, then I can come to you and I can really give you yeah. good advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just kind of a business vital kind of thing. Like yeah. you just, I mean, if you don't know how you're, but there's so if, many without businesses, that, you don't know how your business is doing. Yeah. Like, but so many if people making money, if you're losing money, they just like, look at, they're like, I look at my bank balance every day. Like, that's <laughs> how I run my business, right. which it's possible to run it that way. There's, there's plenty of successful businesses that like, if you're just making lots of money, like you yeah. can do that. <laughs> but most businesses, like if you want to take your business to the next level, you can't do it that way. Right. Like you have to have, you have to have good butts and you have to have people advising you. Like yeah. then you can see trends, you can see numbers, and I can see stuff. And cool, awesome. Uh, now you've got another project coming up here. I know we don't have time to talk about it in depth, but uh, this new wealth rabbit. Coming yes. Up here. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, wow! If you want to give like a quick little teaser for that, and and yeah, and I'll, can, I'll come back on. But yeah, yeah. we we'll have to do a whole separate. So thing for that. Um, my brother Adam and I, we've had an idea for a while, which is create a product for Simple IRA. So Simple IRA is a retirement plan for small businesses. Um, it's similar to a 401k. More, it's more simple. A, a simple IRA. <laughs> and it's and it's perfect for a lot of small businesses. Perfect for people. That's what we started um, with. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a starter plan if you want to offer something for employees, if you want to, if you're not ready to defer the max to a 401k, but you want to have a retirement plan, you want to help your employees save. Mm-hmm. It's a low cost, great plan. There's nothing on the market for that as far as automating, you know, making it easy for employers to set up, to yeah. do the recurring deposits, for the employees to have good investment options. Mm. And we were basically like, it's been an idea in our heads and we've tried to get somebody to help us, but he didn't have enough time. And then mm-hmm. Aggie luckily was like, hey, I'm ready to do like a big project. But I was like, I've got this other one. This one's a little bit more complex <laughs> um, and it's kind of a different service line, but it's adjacent to what you guys offer. Like you guys, yeah. you guys do small business stuff. This is a small business program. So mm-hmm. we're super excited about it. Should be launching. Um, if you're starting a new plan, you start between October and December. So we'll have pretty much it fully ready to go. By then, we'll have a beta stuff before that. But yeah, I mean, and you guys have been awesome and turning it, basically creating everything. We've been making sure it looks good and it's easy for clients on mm-hmm. the back end to do. So we're super excited about that. And, um, there'll be more to come. Fantastic. So stay tuned to listen to stay more tuned. about Wealth Rabbit. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Any other? Um, so you've been traveling a lot. You just came back from Vegas kind of recently, right? Yeah. 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 I survived Vegas. You survived Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You got a big trip coming up. Going uh, to Spain with my talk. wife. Yeah. Um, that's not a CPA related trip. No, that's, that's just, just uh, me and my wife Fantastic. leaving town yeah. for a week. Awesome. Gonna eat a lot of good food. Yeah, yeah. You got some restaurants Go, lined up. Kind of circling all back to the very beginning. We're yeah, going yeah, to yeah. a restaurant, Diver So, okay. which is number four in the world right now. Okay. Um, kind of, it's like Noma ish, like oh, yeah. out there. Okay. You know, some weird stuff, but yeah. modern cool. Spanish. Nice. So, and the number one restaurant in the world right now is Disfrutar, which is in Barcelona. We're not going there. We oh, couldn't okay. get a table there. Couldn't but get a table. That's like the hottest, one of the hottest, like it puts up a year in advance. Wow. Um, so we, one, one day we'll make it there, yeah. but a lot of good stuff in Spain. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Anything else to plug on the way out? Uh, some, <laughs> how can people find you and learn more <laughs> about BNA? Or, uh, uh yeah, uh, you just go to our website, bnacpa.com. You'll find me there. I have uh, I don't really post anywhere, so we actually have we have hired a marketing person now. Okay, so to post for you for well, not for me personally, <laughs> but for our firm. So, uh, yeah, just go to bnacpa.com. We're on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way. Yeah. I'm on I'm Tatchbug at Instagram. So if you want to <laughs> follow me, but again, I don't post that much. So, yeah. well, cool. thank you again for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's always good to be in the bandit. Thanks for joining the bandit. Yes. Well, that concludes this episode. Stick around next week and see what we talk about. The Bandit Room is a production of Span Enterprises, located in sunny Rock Hill, South Carolina. We've been developing, supporting, and growing successful IRS e-filing and business management solutions since 2010. Go to spanenterprises.com now to learn more. Views and opinions expressed in the Bandit Room are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect or state the opinions of Span Enterprises. No information should be considered as tax, legal, or other professional advice.